with you we're going to go one two three four one two three four i need to know if the lady is breathing do not move him unless he's in any danger so that we don't splint any injuries keep going it's going to give her the best chance from the control center to the crews on the road trying to save lives is all in a day's work for Anna and Tony, the first patient of their shift is Peter. He phoned in at midnight and has been waiting seven hours. How were you yesterday? Were you okay yesterday? Yeah, I was fine. I go to the Nightingale charity shop, help him there and shift him, so I was fine, like, yeah. yeah. After a 20-minute assessment, they decide Peter needs to go to hospital. I feel a bit more relaxed than I was before, yeah. I knew there'd come some time on. You know, I won't be ringing up and complaining and things like that. Yeah, when you're laid up bathroom floor and, and you, you're trying to move and you, your back's clacking because you're sweating on the earth, what's it, and you couldn't move for an hour. The ambulance service prioritises patients from the word go, from the word, you know, the time the call comes through. Yeah. But it is still frustrating that when we arrive and we find out that the patient has been in pain or they've been on the floor for that amount of time. It's, it's, it's not easy for us to take, is it, no. sometimes? In Wales, the most urgent calls are red, while the patients with serious but not immediately life-threatening problems like Peter are classified amber. They're judged by the standard of care given, not the time, but that is still recorded. And over the last three years, waits have tripled. In April, the average waits were almost two hours, with one in 20 patients waiting more like nine hours. You know, they can be waiting hours for us to get to them and then sometimes jobs that aren't necessarily life-threatening by having to wait long periods we can compound an issue and cause more problems later on and you get you get quite scared because like I live in the community I live in the community that I serve so I often think you know if my family were like poorly there probably wouldn't be um, any resources available to send to them it. Don't stop those compressions until they take over from you. Back at the control centre, Catherine's red call is yeah, over, yeah. as after nine minutes, the ambulance oh, has arrived. I'll leave you with the crew, OK? You've done really well. The Welsh Ambulance Service target is that at least 65% of those red calls are reached within eight minutes. Last month, crews reached 51% of patients within the target time. It can really be crushing sometimes. Um, I mean, I, I've had um, red calls where um, the call goes red and you're telling them to go get a defibrillator and you're looking at it and there is literally no one to send. It doesn't happen very often, thankfully. Outside Wrexham Myler Hospital, by mid-morning, there are five crews waiting to hand over their patients. And across Wales, between February and April this year, more than 23,000 hours were lost by crews waiting to hand over their patients at A&E. Duty manager Luke arrives on site to make sure the delayed crews all get a break. The term moral injury comes up a lot and I'm seeing it in crews a lot and it's, I've experienced it myself, knowing that there's a lot of things that we could be doing but we can't. Anna and Tony's next call is to Derek's home. After an hour making phone calls to try to avoid his admission, transporting him to A&E is the only option. Perfect. How's that? I'll help you legs. The way things are at the moment, everything's overwhelmed. Um, all the departments, all the services. Um, and then it just sort of back filters to us. How do you feel about them coming to get you? Very pleased. Feel yeah. like you'll get sorted now. Yeah. And you sit here and, and you're dealing with one patient and you, you think, oh my God, what's going on out there? What is going on at that particular call? Why can't we get to them? And then it all starts to come into perspective and you have to sit down, take a breath in and think, OK, we're here, let's deal with it. Somebody could be dying. Yes, yes, they could be. And do you think that has happened because of the situation? Yeah, potentially, yeah. So it does worry me and it frustrates me, um, but it's such a big problem, I don't know how we'd go about solving it or making it better at the moment.